We're talking today about social media and the management of risk. Is there a connection? Is there a social media implication behind, for example, the closure of the News of the World or the Arab Spring? To discuss these topics, I'm joined by Steve Virgin, who is a social media expert and consultant and also a director of Wikimedia, which is the brains behind Wikipedia. How would you express that, Steve? Wikimedia UK is responsible for the promotion of values and uh, the desires and objectives of the um, Wikimedia Foundation. We're best known for Wikipedia. So as a director of that, um, I'm involved with outreach in the social media sphere across the United Kingdom um, on behalf of Wikimedia UK. Okay. Um, well, tell us then, what is the connection between social media and risk management? I think from a business perspective at the moment, uh, in terms of risk, um, people have got the wrong end of the stick with social media. Social media isn't, in some respects, the, the cause and the, the, the killer the device that finishes something off. Um, it has no impact whatsoever if a business's um, corporate response, social responsibility program is working well, if its corporate governance is working well, if it's functioning as, a, as an entity. So, Social media is not a threat in any of those aspects whatsoever when the world is working well. It's only when something's broken that it has an impact. It, it, it's almost like a magnifying glass that shines um, in on whatever that particular problem is and then uh, magnifies it to such an extent that it can get picked up and spread with incredible speed to potentially millions of people. So can you tell us how this works in practice in a case like, for example, the news of the world? Over that weekend, the story broke, which was that the, the telephone, in the hacking scam, the telephone of Millie Dowler had been hacked by the news of the world. This caused something like a wave of revulsion that had probably been unseen for some time uh, across the general public. And what we found was that um, some people decided to take direct action. Uh, a group of people who, um, I'll just check the names here so I can make it accurate for you, whose aliases on Twitter were The Z Factor, The Vanity Swan, The Great Gonzo, uh, but go, one of them goes by the name of Melissa Harrison, um, decided to uh, initially research the uh, advertisers of the news of the world make a list of who they were on a, word, on a single Word document, do um, an email to each of them saying roughly, um, are you, dear Ford, dear Chrysler, dear whoever it was, are you happy that you are um, advertising in the news of the world? And then having it tweetable so that this Word document where all of these emails were were linked back to a host site, which was in this case uh, called um, uh, tonyonpoint.org.uk, whereby um, that was then tweetable. So you've got um, direct action in finding out the advertisers and, and laying a page down on a simple Word document, which enabled um, people to be able to instantly get access to the um, advertising in the news of the world. Then you've got uh, point.org.uk, which is a classic blog, which is hosting that. Then you've got Twitter for the speed of distribution, which is behind that. And then that needed to be picked up by one element that was missing, which was um, to be able to popularise it. And the uh, Guardian columnist and long-time uh, media pundit, Roy Greenslade, very quickly picked up on something different which happened here and he linked this page to his blog. And as Roy Greenslade was a, a contributor to The Guardian, who in turn were at the forefront of breaking this news story and had been for the previous two to three years, it just went viral. So what are the implications for risk managers? How should they respond if they think they might be at the centre of a news of the world type story? If you're in a, uh, what's called a B2C, Business where you're dealing with customers on a daily basis. Social media is a must because if you don't um, act quickly to uh, people talking to you, they're going to say other things about you to other people and that's going to lead to a chain reaction. Similarly, um, if you are listening to people, uh, your customers and your clients, and even if they're saying bad things about you, let them say them because you might find there's a weakness that you can learn about very quickly. Instead of paying £50,000 for a company to go out and do market research, it can be on your doorstep.
that for hours, and you can then take action to fix it. And if you're then honest and open with people, that, you know, yeah, with this, this washing machine had a glitch in a part, but now we've paid for it to be fixed. Every one of you that had the thing that was wrong is now fixed. They're going to be even more delighted that you responded to them that way, and they're going to be your biggest advocates and ambassadors. Steve Virgin, thank you very much.